as we worship Jesus today together as a group. Hallelujah. here and that is a lot of fun. I was reading through the Psalms this morning and I came upon uh, Psalms 117. It's, it's really the shortest Psalm in, in the whole book as far as I've found and, and I think you know the Psalms were songs 
and I think it was a chorus, and it was one of those, uh, what do they call them, ear, earworms. That's a song that gets stuck in your head and you can't get it out, you know? And I think this would be, this would be a, a Old Testament earworm. It simply, says, it simply says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol Him, all you peoples. For great is His love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. You know, if you have problems memorizing Scripture like, like I do, this would be a good one to start because it would be one that you could just kind of rotate through your mind at the grocery store or, or, you know, walking down the street or when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night. It is a wonderful thing to just praise the Lord. So this morning, I'm asking you, go ahead and clear your mind of everything else. Don't let anything interfere between the communication of God to you and you to God. And this will be a wonderful worship service. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that you are here amongst us, that in the midst of a turmoil, and, and, and all the turmoil in the world, that you are our peace, and you are our guide, and you are our, our loving Father, and you are the object of our worship today. Lord, speak to us. And we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You would stand with us as we continue. Continue in worship this morning.
know, the first song, um, one of my favorite lines in that song is, oh, your grace so free. And then tying that in with, in this song, it says, I couldn't earn it. And it's his love and his grace that pours on us. We don't have to do anything except receive it. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to purchase it. There's nothing that we need to do for him to pour that love and that grace on us. Just receive it. You know, um, this week I was uh, I was watching the news, and uh, oh, that's a dangerous thing to do. That is a dangerous thing to do. Not only did I watch the news, I sought it out. I was just seeing what was going on, and uh, and I thought, what what do I teach this week? What do I what do I talk to these these people I love about? And and the more I watched the news, the more despair crept in my heart. The sadder I got over all the things that were going on, and I thought, man, prayer's got to be the answer. Prayer's got to be the answer. And that's what we've got to do. But you know, when it comes to praying, there's, there's a lot of, well, there's a wide understanding to what it is and what it isn't. There's a story of a lady, well, let me, before I get to the story, there's a serenity prayer. I, you guys have seen the plaques? 
with the serenity prayer. The, the part that's most of the time on the plaque just simply goes, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's a good prayer. Amen. That's a good prayer. But you know what? As I get older, I found a better prayer than the serenity prayer. It's the senility prayer. <laughs> it's the senility prayer. And it's, God, grant me the senility to forget the people I never liked anyway. The good fortune to run into the ones that I do, and the eyesight to be unable to tell the difference. <laughs> I'm liking that one. Not only am I liking it, it seems that I'm living it. <laughs> and that's, that's the issue. There is a story of a lady who was at work, and she got a phone call from the babysitter, and, and the babysitter said, ma'am, your daughter is running a really high fever. Um, you need to call the doctor. Well, she called the doctor, and the doctor called in a prescription, and, and the lady went to the pharmacy and, and drove up, got the, uh, got the prescription, but when she came back to her car, she realized that she had locked her keys in the car. She called the babysitter and said, is my daughter any better? And she said, no, she's not. And, and so the lady, in, in panic, just went to a prayer. And she said, Lord, if you could help me out here, you know, if you could help unlock this car, that would be great. She finished the prayer, and she looked down, and there was a rusty clothes hanger laying there on the ground. And she said, I don't know how to use this. So she's, she's messing around with the window, and, and she keeps praying, Lord, I, I just need some help. If you could just send some help. And about five minutes later, there was this rusty old loud car pulls up. She's still working with the clothes hanger. Out of the car comes this big guy with a big biker's rag on his head, smoking a cigarette, and he goes, here, lady, let me help you. He grabs the hanger. In 30 seconds, he's got the door open. And she said, oh, mister, you are, you are such a nice man. I am so thankful for you. And he said, lady, I'm not a nice man. He said, I just got out of jail an hour ago. I was in for car theft. <laughs> she hugged him and she said, thank you, Lord. You even sent me a professional. There's a lot of misunderstandings about what prayer is and what prayer isn't. And you know, this week we were surrounded by violence, we were surrounded by hatred, we were surrounded by unrest on every level. We're, we're looking for a new pastor, you know, here at the church, and, and that decision is going to chart the course for Lakeside for the next, well, next number of years. We're being challenged by loneliness and isolation and by a virus that nobody understands. <laughs> Any one of these could seem to be overwhelming. And together, even Christians are starting to wonder, what in the world is going on? What's the answer? And really, we, we have a th three choices. We can either ignore what's going on, and that's not working out so well. We could, we could give up hope and despair, and that definitely doesn't work so well. Or we could pray. Amen. Or we could pray. So today, I'm calling on this congregation to, to a time of increased prayer. I mean, we've prayed before and we continue to pray. We've got prayer tents in the back for those of you who want to know what do we focus on. And these, this is a very, a very selfish prayer tent in the fact that it's just about Lakeside. There are things across the state and around the nation and around the world that we, we could be praying for as well. But we as a congregation need to increase our prayers because God is going to be the only answer to what's facing us right now. So let's, let's not just talk about it. Let's just stop for a minute and, and pray. Father, you are the answer to, to every problem. Some may lean on politics, some may lean on policy, some, some will lean on people, but Lord, we know that you are the only answer. So God, today, help us to understand what prayer truly is. 
Examine our hearts. And Holy Spirit, if you could convict us and be our reminder throughout the week that we need to turn to you time and time and time again. God, help us. And Lord, specifically today, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as, as I was working through this week uh, and studying prayer just a little bit, I realized there's some steps that we really all need to take. And I know some of you have been Christians a long, long time. And, and you've been praying for a long time. And, and you guys, to be honest, are probably better prayers than even I am. But everybody deserves a refresher course every once in a while. You know, everybody deserves just a reminder of what we need to do to pray effectively, to pray efficiently, to, to center ourselves in God's will. Because that's what we're doing. We're not asking God, well, we're not changing God's mind. He's changing our hearts. And for us to do that, the first thing we need to do is examine ourselves because successful prayer always starts with a clean heart. In Psalms, uh, Psalm 66, David writes, I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. You know, successful prayer always starts with a clean heart. Always starts with a clean heart. You know, if, if I'm meeting somebody important, you know, the first thing I do or the last thing I do before I meet them is I check myself out. You know, is, is my shirt buttoned? Is it, you know, am I doing right? Am I, you know, check it all out, you know, and make sure that I look good. Make sure that I'm ready to meet the person, you know, Debbie at the airport, you know, this week I picked Debbie up at the airport. That was important, you know, so got there and made sure I was looking good and bought some diet Dr. Pepper and set it in her, in her passenger seat. So, you know, everything was good, you know, just that's what you do when you meet somebody, you make sure you're ready, you make sure you're prepared. You know, before we meet God, we really need to stop just a second. And we really just need to check our hearts. God, is there any barrier between us and you? Is there something that's going to cause static in, in my reception of your will, of your word? Before we pray, we need to realize that sin hinders prayer and that we need to confess. And maybe the first part of our prayer is just acknowledging who God is, but asking Him to forgive us and to bring us back. In 1 John it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You know, I've, I've talked to people, and, and they think confession is just, yeah, God, I did it. I, I, I did it. That's, that's the confession, but it, it doesn't end there. Really, I think there's four steps to confession of sin. And without going into a whole other sermon, let me just say, the first step is I'm sorry. And, and we say, I say that a lot. But the second step is, I, I, I won't do that anymore. God, I know it hurts you. I know you, I mean, I don't do it to buy your love, but I do it because I love. And I won't do that anymore. The third step is I'm under new lordship. Lord, you are boss of my life again. Because what sin is, is when you turn your back on God and you, and you start to walk away. God, I know what you want, but I'm going to do my own thing. I thank you very much. And what repentance is or confession is, is God, I'm coming back to you. I'm leaving that old way behind. I'm sorry. I don't do that anymore. And the last step is I'll try to repair any damage that what my actions, what my words just caused. You can't just say, well, that's the way it is, and you move on. You know, prayer is more than talking. Second step, prayer is, yes, sir. But if you're struggling to give up something, it's okay to be real with God about that too. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, it is, it is okay to be real with God, you know? I mean, when it comes to confession, it's not like God's shocked. I mean, He saw you do it in the beginning. I mean, he, it's not like, what? You're just now telling me this? You know, I mean, God's not going to be shocked about that. And He knows your heart. 
And if you're struggling with something, he understands. He understands the struggles. And he's there and he's faithful to forgive. That's, uh, well, Psalms 27 just says, Hear my voice when I call, Lord, and be merciful to me and answer me. So he will. You know, there was a, uh, you know, as I said, prayer is more than talking, it's listening. Uh, my problem with prayer is I'm ADD enough that I get through what I want to tell God and I forget to listen. I, I don't know if that happens to you. I hope not, you know, but I tell God, you know, how great he is and I tell him what, you know, what's on my mind and, and I thank him and, and I end the prayer and, and I, I'm off to something else, you know? But prayer is more than talking, it's listening. There was a game we used to play in the youth group. We'd spread out a huge tarp, and we'd, in front of the kids, we'd lay out eggs, on, you know, raw eggs on this tarp. And we'd say, it's, this is an obstacle course, and we need some volunteers who will walk it. And they go, oh, oh, yeah, I'll walk it, I'll walk it, I'll walk it. And then we say, blindfolded. <laughs> and they go, oh, no. And we said, oh, but you'll have a voice, you'll have a helper, and, and we can do this. So we blindfolded them. While we blindfolded them, or as we blindfolded them, what we did was we had all of our assistants remove the eggs and put down peanuts. Now that was for the youth sponsors because peanuts give the same satisfying crunch without the mess. You know, we didn't have to clean it up. And so what happened was the rest of the kids, we said, oh, who do you choose to be your voice? And the, and the blindfolded person would say, well, I choose this person. And okay, I choose Debbie to be my voice. Okay, so Debbie's never going to lie. She's going to guide you through this. All right, she's going to say, take a step forward, take a step to your left, take a step to your right. Step real high and real long, you know, so you can avoid this. And, and Debbie's never going to lie. And the rest of the group, we said, you tell our directions too. And so there's this cacophony, this loud clamor of voices telling, no, stop, back, forward, back, forward. And everybody was telling them what to do. And Debbie's trying to get to the, you know, her voice above everybody else's. And you know, the person would, would, would just sometimes be so overwhelmed with all the noise coming in you know, from the outside that they would just stop and go, I I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And you know, in, some, in the world... <laughs> That's a real illustration of what goes on. Because God is calling us forward. He's given us directions. He's told us where to step and where to put our feet. But the thing is, His voice isn't the only voice telling us what to do. His voice isn't the only voice. Now, it was amazing to me that, that once we told the other voices to be quiet and they could hear the one voice that told them the truth, they got through the maze without stepping on anything. It's amazing what happens when we focus in on the one voice. When we focus in on God and His Word. When we focus in on what He has called us to do. How He centers us and gives us peace and gives us guidance so that we don't step in any trouble whatsoever. That's what faith is. That's what faith is. And I'm not just talking about a head faith. I'm talking about about a faith that moves us. Because you see, that's the third step. Effective prayer, it needs faith. Do you believe in a God who can do the improbable? Do you truly believe in a God who is at work in us, through us, around us, with us? That He can do things that we can't even, even stop, to, stop to imagine. That he, he works with us on a daily basis. That He, that he walks with us even, even while we go through mundane life. That he can, he can guide us when we're lost. That He can give us hope when everything around us seems hopeless. You know, it takes faith to please God. Of course, Hebrews says without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Those who earnestly seek Him. Seek Him without, without ulterior motives. Those who put their whole heart into finding out who God is and what God wants us to do. You know, it's not enough just to pray God's will be done unless we're really ready to do God's will. It, the, the prayer that Jesus gave us, Father, you know, as it is in heaven, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Are we really to, ready to live by heaven's rules here on earth? That's what effective prayer does. We have to believe in God above everything else. You know, to make Lakeside Church the church it needs to be is, is not enough. We are not enough. To make Lakeside Church it needs to be our methods are not going to be enough. It's going to take God working in us, around us, and through us to make our prayers effective. You know, the fourth step in effective prayer is we need to believe and our belief needs to move us toward obedience. Successful prayer requires obedience. You know, the question one guy asked me one time, he said, do you think God can trust you with what he gives you? And I thought, well, I hope so. I hope so. You know, as God blesses me, do you, do you think God can trust you with his blessings? Can, you, can, can God trust you to do what he's called you to do? You know, that's the amazing thing about an individual God, a God who loves us individually. He has also challenged us individually. You know, he loves us, but he says, here's what I want you to do. And I have to confess, there are times when I'm going, really? 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 That takes me so far out of my comfort zone. That takes me you know, to do things that I really, am, I'm not comfortable doing those, Lord. And sometimes I have to confess, I've said, I, I don't want to. Can God trust me to do something else before I've done what he's already told me to do? You know, I think a lot of prayers have been blocked because God has said, listen, before you get anything more, I want you to do what I've already told you to do. You know, as a parent, I've said that to my daughters many times growing up. Dad, can I have this? Well, did you do what I told you to do? No? Well, then go do what I told you to do, and then you can have this. And as a parent, you think, well, of course, that makes sense. As a follower of God, it also makes sense. If God's told you to do something and you feel like your prayers aren't being answered, maybe it's because God needs you to do what He's already told you to do before you are ready. Not Him, but before you're ready to take the next step. Fifth step. Successful prayer comes in Jesus' name. You know, all of us, all of us, I've not heard a prayer uttered in this church that didn't close in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, our Savior, I mean, it's embellished one way or the other, but it's always in Jesus' name. And sometimes I think it, we get to the point where it's just a customary ending. That's just the way we, way we pray. But you realize what the name of Jesus means is you're praying in the authority of Jesus. You're, you're given, you, you have been given the authority of Jesus in your prayers. It's the reason we can come to God in the first place. It's what Jesus did on the cross that allows us to even talk to the Father. It's the Holy Spirit in us that, that Jesus gave us that gives us the, the, the ability to speak our mind, and then the Spirit enhances our prayers to say, well, Lord, what He really meant was this. It's, it's Jesus' authority that, that we close these prayers in. As I was raising my girls, uh, there was times where I'd say, go tell your sister to do this. And the sister would come back and say, she's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. She goes, she doesn't have to because I told her to. And I said, well, you tell her daddy said. Now, in the minute she, you know, I told her that, she'd go off and say, well, daddy said. It was like, okay. She was traveling in my name. She was traveling with my authority. She knew the power that I had over, over the, the household. <laughs> Deb was gracious enough not to tell her that she had the power, but you, know, but you know what I mean. But you know what I mean. You know, when we start... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, when we, when we finish our prayers in the name of Jesus, 
What we're saying is we are standing in the place of Christ our Lord. And we are praying these things to God's glory, to the building of His kingdom, to, with the authority of the Son of God. And God has given Jesus what? All authority. Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Do you realize that's the power behind your prayer? That's the power behind your prayer. That you've been given the authority of Christ. When you pray, you represent Christ. When you pray, you pray with Jesus' authority. And that should reassure us and allow us to have confidence in what we tell God. Number six. Successful prayer requires perseverance. It requires persistence. You can't just pray it once and consider it done. Sometimes prayers like that work. You know? You shoot a, I call those arrow prayers. You know, you shoot a quick prayer to God and, and He answers and you're going, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, thank you for that. I appreciate that. But then there are also things where we need to pray over and over and over and over again. And it's the persistence. It's God, you know, again, as a parent, my daughter would come up and say, can we do this or can I have this? And, and I'd say, well, let's, let's think about that. Let's wait on that. And that didn't always mean no. One time my daughter goes, ah, when you say you think about it, that just means no. And it was no, it doesn't mean no. It means let's think about it. And sometimes I'd wait until she asked me two or three times for the same thing to see if she was really serious about what she was asking. And I think God does the same thing sometimes. It's not that God's being cruel. It's not that He's being deaf to, to our requests or, or calloused to our hearts. He's, he's going, are you, are you really serious about this? In the book of Luke, it says, And will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? He will see that you get justice. He will see that you get the best in your life. You know, prayer isn't a magic wand. Prayer is part of a relationship. And I have to be careful when I say emphasize prayer because I, it, communicating with God is, is there. I went to a prayer seminar. As a matter of fact, our church was hosting a prayer seminar and, and the prayer expert came to, to our church and he was launching a, a brand new book that he had. And, and you know, it was, it was pretty cool. He said, I want to define prayer. And I thought, okay, let's, let's get back to the basic definition. He said, a prayer is a conversation with God. I thought, okay, good, I can deal with that. You know, conversation with God, three, you know, three words. I, even my mind's got that. And he said, let me expand that. Prayer is a conversation with the most loving God. I thought, okay, I can, I can do that too. For the next 20 minutes, he expanded that definition until it was like not just a paragraph, it was a page long. And you know what? I was real tempted to stand up and walk out, but you can't do that when you're the host of the whole thing. <laughs> you know, I, th I thought, you're making it too complicated here, son. As he was older than I was, <laughs> calling him son. But I was really a little perturbed because he started out with a perfectly good definition. It's a conversation with God. It's a conversation with a God who loves you. And he could have stopped there, and if he had dwelled on just those words, I think he would have related so well to the common man but he expanded it to the point where i thought man even as a theologian i'm not sure where you're going prayer isn't a magic wand it's not it's not a coke machine moment where you punch the right buttons and god delivers what you've asked for it's not a santa claus moment where we sit on god's lap and say i've been a good boy this year grant me gifts it's an ongoing relationship. It's you talking to God and God talking to you. 
It's you searching God's Word and finding out what Jesus and what God really wants you to be praying about. Richard Foster writes of the relationship. Richard Foster is a great guy. If you, if you haven't read any of his books, then it's, it's worth reading. He, he writes, well, actually, he writes that there, he was in a grocery store and there was this little boy, little boy, and, and the little boy was just angry, just frustrated, crying, kicking, screaming. Anything the father tried to do was just totally ineffective. And finally, the father just picked the boy up in the midst of a fit, and he started a sing-song, just a make-up song to his son. And it started out, Daddy loves you. He loves the way you smile. He loves the way you laugh. He said, I'm glad to be your dad. And suddenly, the song did what nothing else could do. And the little boy relaxed in his dad's arms. And the temper tantrum was over. And the tears were dried. And where there was screaming, there was laughter. And finally, the boy looked up at his dad and said, Sing it again, Daddy. Sing it again. That's the kind of relationship that we've been called to have with God. Where when unrest and and incivility and and COVID and riots and hatred and and all the things that surround us drive us crazy to the, to the point of despair and tears, to the point where we get angry ourselves and the world starts invading our lives. God sings over us, I love you. You're my child. And I care. And I want the best for you. It's in moments like these, through prayer, that we can empty our hearts out to God, that we can be totally honest with Him, and that He still sings, I love you, I made you, I've gifted you, I understand your heart, I want to make you like my son Jesus. Listen to me as I sing, I love you. And we, like the little boy, can relax and let go of our temper tantrums and become the child God calls us to be. I am a news junkie. I, uh, I know, Deb shakes her head and goes, you'd be much better off if you weren't. And it's probably true. You know, but I read of the riots. I read of things being torn down in anger. I, I read of people being arrested and then people that should be arrested, in my opinion, that aren't. I mean, you know, it just, and the world, it, it affects my attitude. It, it steals my hope sometimes. It, it, it raises my level of frustration, and, and I think, what is the answer to this? Where do I turn? What do I do? How do I, how do I handle things that seem unprecedented in my life? God, I, I don't know where to turn. And it's almost as if God verbally says, here I am. Here I am. So I don't know what you're facing this week. I don't know if you're facing isolationism, you know, loneliness, if you're just feeling frustrated, if you, if you just don't know where to turn, if you shake your head, or you find yourself getting angry inside. Folks, I'm calling us to an increased time of prayer. So please, please, if you are called to be a prayer warrior, and, and to please set aside, aside time so that you can be our intercessors. No, that's a theological 
term. I just mean, would you talk to us? Talk not to us. Would, would you talk about us on your knees to God? You know, if you're going to gossip, gossip to God. You know, I mean, you know, that's the way it is. If you're going to talk about people, talk about people to God. Okay? That's part of, part of what being a prayer warrior is all about. But if you don't consider yourself a prayer warrior, even, even just a common prayer, I'm just asking you to set aside a time. Set it on your watch. Set an appointment. You know, whether you need to get up a little bit earlier or a little, stay up a little bit later, whatever you need to do, turn off the TV. But folks, we're not going to get out of this well if we don't pray. That's just it. Let's pray. Father, we acknowledge you as God, creator of the universe. We acknowledge you as our Father, our Lord, our boss, and the director of our lives. Father, my prayer is that you stir the Holy Spirit that lives in each of us and that calls us to a deeper relationship with you. God, please teach us to pray. Help us just to realize that we can't do it wrong. We can just do it better. God, guide us. Guide us as we face a, a nation in turmoil. Guide us as we, as we figure out how to live with COVID in a community and how to reach a community when we can't, can't touch them, we can't go out, we can't, can't do a lot of things. Lord, show us what we can do. God, give us patience and endurance in a time that's, that tests our, our, our souls. Father, be with us as we search for a new pastor. Lead us to the right one. God, guide us as you call us deeper into your love. And Lord, we pray these things and so many more in the authority of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
couple reminders. Again, we have prayer tents in the back. If you don't have one of these in your home or a couple, then please take one and to turn it around from time to time. The sides are different. They just remind you at times to pray. And I carry it in my pocket. We've had these for a while, but they're little plastic hearts in the back. If you do not have one of those, please grab one. It's just a prayer trigger. You know, every time I reach in my pocket, I grab a little heart and I think, oh yeah, it's time to pray for the church. It's time to pray that God's will be done and that, that he guides us through this time. I do want to say too, we are continuing to search for a pastor. We're talking to a couple. Um, and, you know, I can't give you names yet because they, you know, they haven't said yes. We haven't said yes to them. I, I will tell you that looking for a pastor is sometimes like speed dating. You know, you, you got, you know, just interviews here and there and you hope the best and they're showing you the best and we're showing them the best and we're hoping that, you know, and again, the only way we're going to get the right pastor in the right place at the right time is through prayer. So please support the church uh, in prayer this week as we uh, continue the, the search. Okay, if you know somebody who uh, who would usually be here if it weren't for COVID, and they have to stay home because of health concerns or fears, please give them a call. We've got a lot of lonely people out there. We do, and the answer to that is going to be you and me. Okay, and uh, if the video is still running, then we just want you to know we're thinking of you, and uh, would love to have you here whenever it's safe for you guys, all right? So just know that you're on our minds, you're on our hearts, okay? All right, offering is in the back, and we encourage you all to continue worshiping through offering, and uh, have a great week, all right? And don't forget to pray. All right, you're dismissed.